Today is a, an extension of our introduction to ARCHICAD. We're going to have a look at some more two-dimensional tools or drafting that we might do in 2D. For now, we're avoiding 3D or BIM, just to keep it very simple as an introduction to ARCHICAD. Now, apart from maybe site planning or, or some very basic drafting, what are the sort of things that we would still use 2D for with our new BIM revolutionary way of working? as an extension or as opposed to working in two-dimensional CAD. Last week we looked at how to import uh, a plan, a PDF perhaps. We looked at how to explode that into 2D to create line work. The next thing that I want to have a look at is how to create details. Because generally once we're using BIM we're no longer creating plans, elevations, sections from 2D. We're now using our BIM modeling tools such as the wall, door, window, column, beam, slab, stair, roof, shell to create our documentation but there's still one area that we need to essentially draft and that's detailing so not the 1 to 100 drawings but the 1 to 10, 1 to 5 scale drawings. Now from experience I'd recommend that you don't draw these on your main stories. I've had big big problems by doing that in the past. Instead we go over to our navigator on the right hand side of the screen and we're going to create a detail. Now in this case we're cheating and we're creating new independent details. We're not creating a detail that's a reference from a 3D model but that's fine. We're going to go new independent detail. It doesn't matter what we call it at the moment. Now this detail creates a separate world if you like, but in this case it's only a two-dimensional world. That's not a 3D environment and because it's not a 3D environment we see that a lot of our 3D tools have all gone grey which means we can't use them. The object however is still enabled because we can place objects in 2D as well and some objects of course are only 2D. Okay. When we're drawing, we should always be thinking about the scale that we're drawing in before we start because it will affect the way that the drawing looks, it will affect the thickness of the lines and the spacings of the hatches and various other elements like that. Now I'm going to work at a scale of 1 to 10 just so we can have a quick look at what this looks like. Let's just quickly jump to one of my drawings. And here is a, an image, a PDF of what these details might look at. So this is what we're trying to create. So we're working in a scale of 1 to 10. And these aren't modelled components. These are essentially lines and fills and text as well. So how do we create that? We could start by drawing lines. So let's say I wanted to draw a brick. How do I draw a brick? What this is the size of a brick? When it comes to detailing, it comes down to as much construction knowledge as it does perhaps drawing ability. So a brick is 110 mils wide and a brick is 86 mil, sorry, 76 mils tall. I'm holding shift now to restrain this line using the other line I've already drawn as a reference and I'm going to finish it off and now we have a box, a box of lines. Now that didn't take too long but in order to make this look like a brick I'd have to maybe draw some lines to draw a hatch. Of course hopefully some of you are shaking your head at me going this man's crazy what is he doing? The point is that this is very very time consuming and a slow way of working and we'd never actually want to do this anymore now that we've got better tools. So. I could draw this to draw one particular brick and, and that's crazy. I wouldn't ever do that. What I do instead is fill it with a hatch. Of course that means we have to have a hatch and in ARCHICAD we create these hatches with fills. So let's see what sort of fill I have available. Now I've created a lot of my own fills. Um, I've created my own everything essentially but in this case for your benefit I'm using the standard start from scratch ARCHICAD. So I need to find a fill that's accurate to what I'm trying to create. Therefore I'm going to go for this one that's called brick work. And I'm going to, instead of drawing, I could do that, I could use my 
polygonal type and retrace these edges, but that's a bit silly. I could use a two-point marquee, or sorry, a two-point method and draw it. I could use a rotated rectangular method. These are just different methods of drawing. Or of course, the new one that I want to teach you today is the magic wand. Once we've already got a shape, rather than having to redraw an element to fit inside that shape, we can instead magic wand it. To use magic wand, we hold down the space bar. We'll see that our cursor then changes to a magic wand and I can click and that will place the fill inside of my box. Now, of course, what's interesting about fills in ARCHICAD 18 and previous versions is we now have, when we place a fill, the ability for a fill to have an outline. We can turn that outline off and turn it back on. We can change the line type of that outline. We could change, obviously, the, the color or the pen of that outline. And we can do similar things. Sorry, I'm going to turn my... Wi-Fi off. We could do similar things also with the fill itself. So let's turn this back to black and I could change the fill foreground color and the fill background color. Now we don't generally want to do this, I'm just showing you what's possible. However, to make this easier, instead of drawing a line first, when I'm drawing detailing, I find it quite easy just to work with fills. And instead of using lines and fills, which will mean that we might need to edit multiple things, we can just draw with a fill straight away. So 110 by 76. And now we have this fill. This fill has an outline. That outline can be thicker if I want it to be. What does thickness mean? Everything looks very thin at the moment. When we're drawing detailing, it's very important, even more than when we're just drawing at plans, that we understand what true line weight is. I'm going to click this here to describe it. True line weight represents the line weight as we would see it when it's printed at the scale. You'll note that if I change the scale, the line weight will change as well. That is why it's very, very important when we're drawing detailing particularly, but any drawings for that matter, that we always draw to scale or use the right vision scale when we're drawing. Now, of course, we're drawing to one-to-one. -to -one. We're always drawing to true dimensions as it is in real life, and we're reducing for the purpose of placing on a layout. Now, what are we trying to achieve with this uh, documentation, with this detail, we're trying to show what a brick might look like. When we're doing drafting, uh, if I'm trying to show something that's cut, therefore this brick is cut, it's going to have a, a thicker outline. So I'm going to use pen 3. You'll see here my first lot of pens are black and these are my drafting fills. Generally therefore will stick to black, however I'm going to break some rules today. I'm going to make the, the foreground pen black but very very thin you'll see number one, and I'm going to make the background color, in this case orange, essentially because I'm trying to show that this is a brick. Now, it's not Australian standards to use colors in details, but as you would seen in that image that I showed you before, not there currently, uh, I quite like using colors just to represent what I'm doing. Uh, you can always take colors off quite easily, but having them there to begin with helps people, maybe lay people, who don't understand the profession to understand a little bit more of what we're showing. Now, how do I do this to show mortar? That's the next thing that would go between bricks. I'm going to draw another fill. Now, I'm just going to use the settings that I've got, and then I'm going to change it. There's no right or wrong way. You can change the settings and then draw, or draw and then change the settings. Use what I've already got so I don't have to start from scratch. 10 mil mortar joints. I'm going to change the outline of this to be 2 now instead of 3, and I'll send it to the back just so it's being hidden slightly. I'm going to now have to find an appropriate um, hatch. There's one here called mortar that probably suggests it's appropriate. I'm going to make in this case the foreground a little bit thicker because otherwise a dot tends to disappear and I'm going to make the background a light grey just so it's a little bit different. Now if I was to repeat this I wanted to make a, a detail of multiple bricks with a flush mortar finish, all I do is select both of these, multiply or move multiply 
increment, yes, or spread. I could do either one of these. Let's say I want to do increment. I want 10 bricks. I'll click on one point, click to where I want to drag for the single repeat, and then it will draw 10 bricks. So there we go. That's how we can start to draw really quickly, and this is where CAD becomes a big advantage over hand drafting. Of course, this isn't BIM, it's very two-dimensional, but for detailing, it works quite well. Let's say, for instance, I didn't want flush joints on my brick. Let's say I wanted a rebated or a raked joint. To do this raked joint, I'm gonna choose the edge, click on the edge of the fill. I'm going to switch to a curved corner, and I'm going to add a radius of four. You'll note here that it's doing something a little funny. It's got this little edge that's sticking out because if I turn the true line weight off, we see that the edge is quite sharp. And of course, when we add a true line weight to that, it's still trying to create that sharp edge. So we just have to be careful about how we draw it and whether that's giving us a result that we might not like the look of. So I'm going to reduce that. And I'm going to look at another option on this side. In this case, I'm just going to offset it to do a rebated edge. 5 mil. Now again I can multiply this. Multiply. Let's do it a different way this time. We'll do spread and we'll do 86 millimeters. Now 86 millimeters isn't perfect for a brick rod but that's actually the dif distance between each individual brick. If we're doing a brick rod then we might need to be a little bit more specific. What is a brick rod you might ask? A brick rod is a vertical increment of bricks. 86 is a sort of a random number, isn't it? So a brick rod is seven bricks totaling 600 millimeters. So what I'm going to do here is say I want to have a distribution of seven bricks. So actually I want six, let's say, because it's six additional. I'm going to start here This isn't going to work. <laughs> um, let's try that again. Uh, let's draw a line. I'm just going to have to draw a reference line so I don't get myself confused. 600. Select the bricks. Multiply. Distribute. Now I'm going to choose the top of my brick. And now we've got a proper brick rod. Of course, I delete the, the mortar, perhaps. Let's try that again. Top of the mortar this time. And there's my accurate brick rod. You'll see here that we've got the rebated joint and we've got a raked joint, a very, very small rake joint uh, on the other side as well. Now, this is one particular type of fill. We could do this with a lot more, but hopefully you understand what we're talking about. Let's make this into a brick veneer wall. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to move it another 50 millimeters. Let's make it smaller. Let's turn it into a timber stud. What's that? So we need to reduce it by 20 millimeters to make it 90. It's currently 87, 86, so I need to reduce it by... My math isn't very good. down to 90 by 45. What do I want my timber to be? I don't want it to have a fill. I'm going to leave the background. I'm going to try to find a brown. I don't have a very good brown in this situation. What am I going to use? Let's use maybe yellow. And I'm going to use a line this time to draw the cross, which is showing that my timber is structural and not dressed. Let's finish this uh, brick veneer wall off a little bit. 10 mil. Let's make this into plaster, plasterboard. Two. Background, I'll make this one white. Maybe I draw a line to represent my um, stud in elevation. It's not thick, so it shouldn't be thick. Maybe we use an object insulation.
I like this insulation, it's quite quick and easy to use. This is an object, so we have to rotate it, we can stretch it. There's also a fill tool that does insulation now, but I still personally prefer this one. We can increase the size of it. There we go, and we need a bit more detail. But in essence, this is drafting. Uh, this is drafting not just with lines, but using fills. And so this is another thing that ArchiCAD can do with 2D technology. Now, I don't think this is much uh, harder to use than AutoCAD. Personally, I actually reckon this is a bit easier to use than AutoCAD for what we're doing at the moment, having worked with both. And there we go.